Welcome to First Grapevine, a United Methodist Church. We're glad you have joined us for worship in person or online. Please take a moment and register your attendance by either filling out one of the registration cards or online through our church website, firstgrapevine.org, or our mobile app. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. I'm Carly. I'm a pastor here, and we're glad that you're here. Uh, we're glad that you chose to come to worship this morning when you could be many other places. And we believe that because you did so or because you're watching online that we're more complete as the body of Christ. Amen. I've got two announcements for you. I've got two and a half announcements. One's the usual. If you could register your attendance with us, that just lets us keep track of who's here. And my other two announcements are we have a blood drive going on today in the Family Life Center, the gym over in that other building over there. And we have some, swat, some slots open starting at 11.15 going to 1.15. Is that right, Miriam? At 10.55. Okay, so now until 1.15. And so if you wanted to sneak out, you have no marks against you uh, if you want to go give blood, but that's a great way to show your neighbor you love them in a real and tangible way. My second announcement is we have Vacation Bible Camp coming up, not this week, but the next, and we have almost 300 students registered for that, which is exciting, and we need your help. We need about 10, 15 more volunteers and if you're thinking, I have no special skills, I can't tell a story, I can't cook a, bake a cookie, I can't get up in front of kids, don't worry. We have jobs for you and we need you and we'd love for you to volunteer. There should be uh, a place you can do that on the website or you can come talk to the pastors and we'll get you connected. I'll, I'll invite you now to take a deep breath and let's center ourselves. Linda's played the prelude. God is here. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we're grateful for your presence with us this morning. We're thankful that you are present with us in worship. When we sing, when we listen, when we pray, and then when we leave. And that's our prayer that you would transform us during this time so that we can go be the hands and feet of Christ to those in need. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and let's join our voices in singing together our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God, Only Wise. <laughs>
to invite those who are part of Blankets of Hope Ministry to come forward. If you don't know, so you can start coming forward now. If you don't know about Blankets of Hope, it was started about 15 years ago at our church. And what it is is uh, a group makes these blankets. They cut them. They tie them. They sew them. It takes about an hour to make each blanket. And then they go to Valley Hope, which is a center here. Is it in Grapevine or Colleyville? Grapevine, thank you. It's in Grapevine, and it's for people who are coming out of addiction, who are struggling with that, and have made the step uh, to get seek treatment. And so what they do is we've got, we've got 86 blankets here, or about 86 blankets. That's 86 out of over 2,500 blankets that have been made over the past 15 years. And what they'll do is they'll bring the blankets into the center, and the ladies and gentlemen who help with the ministry will line up, and the patients there, the people there, will go through and they'll pick a blanket for themselves. And they've had everything taken away from them. This is an item of one of the only items of comfort they have. And I had the privilege of going right before the pandemic started. And it means so much to them that someone would, that they don't know would take the time to make them something with their own hands. These aren't store-bought. These aren't just donated. These are made with love and they're prayed over. And so this is a ministry of our church. We've got over 50 volunteers. Some of them are here today. Many of them are not. And they come from all over, even people not from our church. And so we're grateful for that ministry, and we want to affirm that. And as a congregation, we want to bless these blankets. And so I invite you, if you're up here, if you'll put your hand on a blanket, and we will all pr let's all pray together over these. God, we thank you for the gift of creativity. We thank you for the spark that initiated this, for the people who thought of others and decided to care for them, to be the hands and feet of Christ to those in need. We thank you for each blanket that's been made, and we pray for each person who will receive a blanket from Valley Hope. We pray that it would bring them comfort, that it would bring them warmth. And in times when they feel alone, we ask that they feel the presence of God and they feel the presence of this community that loves them and cares for them and prays for them. We ask that this be a tangible reminder of your love for them. We thank you for these blankets and for all those blankets that will be donated. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Can we say thank you to these volunteers? Yes, thank you to everybody involved in that important ministry. And let us just remember that, that we can pray uh, for the recipients of these blankets, not just today, but, but every day. And uh, we ask that you consider to be a part of this ministry. If you want to know how you can get involved, you can talk to one of the pastors, talk to anyone that you saw up here, and we can get you plugged in, and you can be a part of this life-changing ministry. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for the gifts that you have blessed us with in our lives. We thank you for your presence here with us this day. Open up our hearts and minds to hear you, to see you, and to follow your light as you guide our path. Lord, bless our ministries, bless our church, or show us who you are calling us to be. And be present as we pray the words that your son Jesus first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please prepare to receive this morning's offering.
before we sing our hymn of preparation, I just wanted to take a moment to thank Mike Corson and Linda for that beautiful arrangement. <laughs> Mike is uh, one of our regular musicians who plays with us very often when the brass is over here behind this baffle. And I wanted to mention that the piece that they played is actually in our hymnal. It's a hymn written by Duke Ellington, which is why it had such a jazzy feel. And hopefully someday soon we'll sing the hymn, but what a, what a wonderful uh, way to hear that for the first time. Mike and Linda did. Uh, our next hymn is something that uh, you probably learned when you were a child in Sunday school. If you uh, attended Sunday school as a child like I did, this little light of mine. And when we hear the scripture a little bit later, you'll see why it's appropriate. But I invite you to remain standing, sing this little, uh, mine, this little light of mine uh, together. have some fun in worship. And now this is a time where we speak together the words with our mouths that we believe, with our hearts, with our affirmation of faith. Please join me in this morning's affirmation. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ, and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Once a month, we have one of our Stephen ministers read the scripture in the service, and I can summarize this program as such. If you are going through something good or bad that's just causing you stress and you need to process with someone, our Stephen ministers have gone through extensive training so that they can be good, confidential, prayerful listeners. So contact the church office, contact me, contact Donna if you'd like to know more about this program. Now, this particular Stephen minister, they're all very special, but this is the one standing here. It's extra special. Donna Bertram McClure is, uh, you, so how long have you been a nurse? 53 years. 
53 years, is on the board of directors at Baylor Grapevine Hospital, right over here. So it's incredible to have someone such experience and a part of our family there uh, in that, that great institution. And just this week, I went to go visit someone and I waved at your picture on the wall every time. Carly can confirm I do that. It embarrasses her. So anyway, now you have a new friend. I've introduced you. Donna, take it away. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Grant. Uh, the scripture reading this morning is from uh, the Common English Bible, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so that they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. Thanks be to God. For This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I didn't read it.
A tree, vine, or bush can be identified by the kind of fruit it produces. The Bible often describes a person's actions and thoughts that give evidence of a godly or ungodly life as fruits. This summer we will be looking at the fruits of the Spirit, the attributes listed in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which are characteristic of a life led by the Holy Spirit. Each week we will focus on a particular spiritual fruit and a familiar edible fruit that begins with the same letter to help us remember all the fruits. This week's fruit of the Spirit is goodness, and the reminder fruit are grapes. The Bible teaches that God wants good things for us as His children. The presence of the Holy Spirit helps us to show the goodness of God to others as a fruit of His character. The next time we enjoy the treat of sweet, juicy grapes, beginning with the letter G, may we be reminded of the sixth fruit of the Spirit, goodness. We are continuing our summer series on the fruit of the Spirit, and uh, if the, this is your first time here, then yes, we know it's a little cheesy, but it's fun. It's 100,000 degrees outside, so we might as well be have a little bit of goofy fun this week uh, as we have a fruit that corresponds with the fruit of the Spirit, same starting letter, goodness, this week is grapes. And before we dive into the Scripture and what it means, uh, I want to repeat something that's already been said but I want to add a little bit of extra guilt. You'll see what I mean. Miriam, please step forward. (laughs) This is Miriam Ward. She is the the saint here in our community who organizes our blood drive that's going on this morning. Now, I like to point that out and for you to see Miriam's face because the reason Miriam has answered this call to be such a, a key part in our church being involved in the blood drive is because Miriam herself is alive because of a blood transfusion. She is not the only person in her family who is alive because of a blood transfusion. Now, we do this once a quarter, and, we, and I say every time, nobody likes needles. I don't like needles. If you do like needles, we'll connect you with a Stephen minister so they can pray with you <laughs> over what you have going on. But a little bit of inconvenience, a, a, a little bit of awkward pain, and it saves lives, so many lives. Not only that, but you don't even have to leave campus. And with gas so expensive, it's hard to get around to do anything good. But all you have to do since you're already here is just go down to the FLC, go down to the gym, and your donation, a few minutes, can save lives. So whether you go down there today or not, please, after this service, take time to think Thank Miriam uh, for all of her hard work and for how many donations do we have already? Oh, probably at least 20. At at least, and that saves roughly how many lives? Uh, 60. There we go. Already 60 lives saved just from the donations this morning. So if you want to get up and flee the scene and get down there now, and I'll let you go back and sit. But actually, can we thank Miriam for all of her hard work for doing this? I... uh, I joke about the guilt, but I just think it really helps to put a a face with a ministry and and to see. And if you know Miriam, she's had a huge impact on our church family. Uh, And we we would be a sore loss without her. So saving lives makes a huge difference. We're continuing a series, as I mentioned, on the fruit of the Spirit. This is based on a scripture from the book of Galatians. It's from chapter 5 as Paul's writing to a church there. He says, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. And and what? And faithfulness. Thank you. I knew I was missing one, but I'm like, where did it go in there? That's why I keep Carly around. She helps me out. Thank you, Carly. And faithfulness. Uh, And all of those, I think, except for goodness, are relatively easy to define, to recognize. We know what they mean. For example, you know when you see somebody being patient, in a grocery store line, and you know when you're being impatient, maybe with your kids or while you're driving down the interstate. We know what faithfulness is. We know joy when we see it. We know peace. We turn on the TV, and we know when we need to see peace, and we know when it's not there. Goodness is a little bit more difficult to define. It's a word that we use a lot, and I'm afraid it can mean a lot of different things. And sometimes I think if we aim for it by ourselves, we can really miss it. But with God's grace and presence in our lives, we can follow the light that leads to God's goodness, and we can share that light to a world that is in need today. 
And what do I mean by it's hard to define? We use that word a lot. We tell each other, have a good day. But I bet if we just sat down and wrote out the list of things it takes to have a good day, we may not agree on everything. Have a good life. We seek the good life. What exactly is the good life? I'm afraid sometimes it's, it's perhaps the, the right thing of doing good, and sometimes it's having a good home, having a good reasonable rate of return, having a certain amount of things in my life. And we look for these, and this is good, and if we don't have this, it's not good. So many other ways that, that we struggle with this word goodness, and what does it mean to be good, and am I a good person? Am I raising good kids? I mean, good grief and my goodness. It's just hard to know what does this even really mean, but I think it gets even more difficult than that. I think it's a lot harder for us to really define and to follow, because I think sometimes when we seek goodness by our own, we get it horribly wrong. I am a student of history. I love history. And if I could afford it, I would still at this moment be in some university library somewhere studying history and archaeology or at a dig site somewhere. But since I can't afford it, I'm here with you. <laughs> there we go. God works in mysterious ways, some of, some of them good. But as a student of history, I've observed that Whenever the church, okay, to pick on our own institution over the past 2,000 years, when we've, when we've decided we'll go out on our own, we can do good, but we don't need God's direction, God's light, God's help. We can do good on our own. The results were things like the Spanish Inquisition. Whenever we said we can do good all around the world on our own, we don't need God's help. The results were things like the Crusades. And so we've, we've, in human history, in Western history, we went through a period called the Enlightenment where we decided, you know what, we don't even need the trappings of church. We don't need religion. We don't need God. We're perfectly fine all on our own. We can do this. We can seek good, and we don't even need to pretend to have God and faith and religion involved. We can form governments. We can lead ourselves. We can do our own thing without God. And do you know what generally happened in that kind of environment and what still happens today? A lot of genocide, a lot of mass murder, a lot of tyranny. Whenever we decide we are good and we can seek good and we can do our own good, it leads to really dark and bad places. That's true as a society, it's true as an institution, and it's true as an individual. I'm going to do what's good for me. I don't need anyone else to have a say in what that is. It leads to bad places. We can see that in our own lives, we see that in people we know, we see that in the world around us. So defining what is good without having the ability to, to see it, where does that lead us? It's a reminder of what this scripture is really saying to the original audience as Jesus is talking to these people and he says, it's like a city on a hill, be the light of the world, be like a city on a hill. Now he's speaking to people who didn't live in our time. Now. Uh, some of us, I know, have grown up in a world where we've always had GPS on our cellular telephones, or at least before that, the TomTom -tom that you plug into your cigarette lighter. But some are, of us are the ancient of days and have to go back to the Rand McNally Atlas. And we live here. <laughs> I have one of those, too. We live in a world here where we have street lights and street signs and interstate systems, and we have ways that guide us. We have cars to get there with headlights so we can see day or night we can get to where we're going. We have to remember this was a time before, before streetlights, before GPS, before any of those things. And so when people set out on a journey in the world that they lived, as Jesus is talking, that you left early in the morning, you left out on foot, or maybe you were riding on a donkey. You left as early as you could to try to get to where you're going. But if the sun set before you got there, it could mean life or death. If the sun goes down and you just happen to take the wrong gravel path, you end up in a dangerous and scary place. Being, wand being in darkness, wandering in darkness, was no laughing matter. It was no joke. It wasn't just a concept or a theory. It was a real-life challenge. And when Jesus is saying, be like a, a city on a hill, you know, they didn't have streetlights. They didn't have a lot of the things that we have where a city just glows all across the countryside. No, they just had a bunch of houses just with a candle here, a lantern there. Maybe as in a city like Jerusalem, 
maybe uh, they would have uh, they would have a torch at a busy intersection so people could see, but not everywhere up and down the street. But just those few lights and those houses, and those key places that lit up the whole countryside, and it's up on there on that mountain. And so travelers who are on the road at night could see it. They could see it and head that way. So Jesus is telling us to be like that, and yet we struggle to find goodness on our own. But don't worry. This is not a, this is not a time where I stand up and say that we are all doomed, for we are not. The word gospel, gospel is the word for the message of Jesus. We call the, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we call those gospels, and the word gospel means good news. For the good news is that God loves us, came down here among us, showed mercy and grace, gave his life for us so that we could see how to walk in the light. Jesus came down here and loved every one of us, offered us mercy and grace so that our path could be lit. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will keep your path straight. So by seeking God, we can walk in the light. And by doing so, we can shed light on the lives of those around us. Now, I love, I love this series of the fruit of the Spirit as Paul is writing this. Keep in mind that this is a, a vine, growing a vine, growing fruit, growing produce. It is not these fruit of a complex mathematical equation. This is not the fruit of building the most impressive building that the world has ever seen. This is not the fruit of being smart, capable, or rich. This is a fruit of God's Spirit working in us. And Paul wrote the secret to this of how we bear fruit just a couple of chapters before, in the same book, in Galatians chapter 2, he writes, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I'm not seeking goodness out of my, my own goodness. I'm not, I'm not seeking to, to find my own will, to make my own way in the world, to do what I want to do. I'm crucified with Christ. See, when we make that acknowledgement, when we take that first step, when we accept that gift offered to us, we say, I'm seeking God and letting God work in my life. I can't do it alone. I can't lead to goodness. I can't raise the kids the way I want without God's help. I'm crucified with Christ. And that is how we begin to bear fruit. And then we continue. Again, uh, he's speaking to people who not only knew what it meant to walk in light and walk in darkness, but they knew a thing or two about growing things. Now, uh, we live in a city, so maybe the biggest thing you grow is a potted plant, uh, or maybe your view, I like that, we call them memes, that says that maybe this pot, maybe this plant doesn't have what it takes to keep up with my fast-paced lifestyle. So even if you're very good at killing potted plants, you know that to keep one alive, it just takes a little bit of work, a little bit of water, a little bit of love, a little bit of care each and every day. Just a little bit of care every day, and that is how it bears fruit. The same is true with our faith, with our souls, with our lives. A little bit of care every day, and God will use that, and God will bless it. A little bit of care, and we can bear fruit in the lives of our families, in the lives of those around us as individuals, but that's also true as a church. Because if you can just look at the history of the church, again, I mentioned a couple of examples of how we have failed, we try to do it on our own, but there are also great examples of how people have just said faithfully, I'm going to follow God's path. I'm going to walk in the light and go where God calls me. All the hospital, I mentioned that, that Donna is, is one of the board of directors at our hospital and here, and even though we know that our, our medical system in our country sometimes is flawed and makes mistakes, but some of the biggest hospitals, some of the, the best healthcare centers in our country and in the world were started by churches. We're started by Christians who said, I'm going to follow God. God says to care for the least, the last, the lost, and I'm going to answer that call. And that led people to start these hospitals, start these institutions. If you grew up in church or you've been here for a while, you've heard about Sunday school, and Sunday school is great. I love Sunday school classes, Sunday school groups, but you know, it's not today what it originally was. Originally, Sunday school was an uh, actual school to teach people how to read. You see, there are people in churches, a lot of women, who realize that all knowledge 
is God's knowledge. All knowledge is power and should be available to all people. And they began to teach those who couldn't afford school. They began to do it on Sunday because that was the day when most people weren't actually working. Here's a time and an opportunity where we can offer education to everyone because these are all God's children. And that led to our understanding of our education program as it is today. It began with normal people saying, I want to walk in the light and I want to shine light for the world around me. We have a lot of opportunities how you can plug in and you can be a part of it today. Now you can answer that call to shine a little bit more light for the world around us. We have so many ministries on display today, it's even hard to keep track. Blankets of Hope is a way that you can be involved in showing prayer and care for someone who is going through one of the darkest times of their lives. We have Vacation Bible Camp coming up. It's already been mentioned. We still need some more people. And uh, I'll translate what Carly said to you earlier because she said, you know, you don't have to have any skills. You don't have to have any talent. No, you don't understand. We already have the musicians, the storytellers, the, the painters. We already have these people lined up. Who we need right now is someone who can pass a background check and who has a pulse. Because I, I know it's not that you don't want to serve. It's not that you don't want to give time. But you, like me, you look at Vacation Bible Camp or a lot of problems in the world, and you say, what can I do? Well, here's an example of you can pass that background check, and you are able to show up, then you can make a difference, and you can shine light in the lives of these kids. Because a lot of us in here, we remember Vacation Bible Camp, and we remember the adults that we met at that time, and it made a difference And those memories and those stories about the Bible traveled with us through good days and the bad. And that's a lot of light for just a little bit of time. I don't know about you, and I mention this a lot, but sometimes we we feel powerless when we look at the world around us. When I think about my five-year-old daughter who was just playing in my office a, a few minutes ago, I think about the world she's growing up in. It makes me feel a little cold and a little scared. But, you know... That's, that's just the darkness speaking. It's, the reality is if we seek God, if I seek God, if I acknowledge him in my ways, seek the light, then the light will shine in her life and the lives of those around her. If I just put God first and just follow where God is leading, that's the right example for my kid and for the people around me. And if we as a church, I know sometimes it's hard. How do we even be a church? How do we even shine that light? How do we get out there? How do we meet people? What do we do? What do we do with these people who are watching online? How does that even work? The answer is we just follow God's light, and we will, God will use us to shine a light to make a difference, not just here in Grapevine, but all around the world. But the first thing we have to do is acknowledge him to follow his light, and we'll bear fruit, and it will make a difference. Amen. Are you supposed to pray or me? Me. We've had so much fun today that I wasn't keep track of what I was supposed to do. But I loved all the music. I loved all the ministries. So, And thank you. That's twice now you had to have my back. I think I owe you lunch at this point. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord, we thank you for the gift of music, of joy, of the example of saints that you have put right here in our church who have shown us how to follow you. We ask that you stir in our hearts Open our minds so that we can see how we can do more to shine your light to a world that is living in darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it's my turn. We come now to the time of invitation where you're asked to respond to what God has been doing in worship here this morning. And so maybe that response is to come after the worship service and pray over one of these blankets. Maybe it's to sign up to help with Vacation Bible Camp. Maybe it's to join our church and take that official step and profess your faith. If that's the case, come and talk to us afterwards. We'd love to chat with you. But whatever you do, don't leave here without being changed because God is at work. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and sing.
Thank you for being here this day. You are all a blessing. I hope you stay cool in this crazy heat, and, and may you do good as you leave this place. Now, let me send you forth with this benediction. As we go from this place, may we all be full of God's grace so that the strangers we'll meet will find in us all good friends. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.